Hello, welcome to the Battling Barrow and another terrain uh, making guide. Um, this one's going to be about making dungeon tiles. And what's that I hear no one see? I thought you'd already done a dungeon tile video, Kev. Well, I had. Um, I'm, I'm still really pleased with them. It's these little ones here. Um, these are kind of like like most of the dungeon tiles you probably see made and buy. Um, little two by two squares that you put together with other little two by two squares to form a room and this one has like a locking mechanism based on the wire lock mock locking mechanism when you put that in and you slot that there and then hey you got a you went pretty cool and the problem is is that for me it just takes too long to set up a room each time you're into a new room um you can have some pre-prepared but that means you've got to make loads and loads of tiles um so it's just a downside, it interrupts the flow of the game. So the beauty thing about making scratch build stuff is you can figure out solutions around these problems. Um, and looking online there are many really cool, better than mine crafters out there. So these are inspired by Wylock's uh, dungeon tiles with the locking mechanism. Uh, so they're really cool, I kind of like, like that, these are 2.5D. So that means the wall is only represented, so it's not a higher wall, so it doesn't get in rid of line of sight. But the downside to that is you lose a lot of immersion and detail. So I want to sort of change that. I want to have a little solution that, like these, the plus side about these is these are very easy and quick to make. So that's one thing. I want them to be easy and quick to make, but I want them to have high wall. But at the same time, I need a solution to get around that blocking line of sight of the players. Uh, then Professor Dungeon Master has a series where he effectively uses a round stage where he, all he sets up is the encounter, which is great. That's kind of what I want to do. I want to, wouldn't want to set up every corridor, every minor room necessary if there's not a lot going on in it. Uh, Fear of the Mind is good for that, so that's what that's for. But at the same time, you just place things on and what's going to happen is if I just use a little unpainted money place things on and they're gonna get easily knocked about that's a downside to that and then tabletop witchcraft just recently had a sort of cave system going vertical where it used magnets and that got me thinking uh, I can just sort of take bits and pieces for each of these different uh, projects and use them to help come up with my own solution to dungeon tiles and I'll probably do another video in a year's time totally changing it but this is what I've come up with so it's a using a sort of stage like Professor DM might just need to set up so I need to set up the room um, it's got the wall so I've got the immersion but if I need saving your player and you're looking this way it's got magnets so you can quickly Remove the wall so you can see in there, and because it's magnets, you can really quickly, easily set up a new uh, a new room really quickly. Uh, yeah, it takes seconds just to. You know, if I quickly remove this, maybe not all of it because it will take too much time. But you know, just to get a room in, you're just talking, you're just slamming magnets down like so, and I don't know, you've got a room kind of thing going on. Um, I won't carry on to them. but there you got a room and because it's magnets it's not going to get knocked so I can you know hold it like this so I thought this video we're just going to go over making these so uh, yeah let's crack on so our main materials we're going to use are as follows we're going to use this it's a metal sheet it's 12 inches by 12 inches um, it's out as a three inch uh, three mil thick but it's not it's barely a mill fig but no worries it will still work on top of this we're gonna cut out squares from um, this is fairly thick paper so this is 300 GSM uh, so we're gonna cut squares out for this to glue onto the metal sheet to act as our tiles um, the walls are going to be made from 6 mil uh, XPS foam and then to attach that to the magnetic strip we're going to use this which is magnetic tape which uh, sort of sits in glues in and it will go through the paper you can see here so it magnetizes us and if you want to make doors uh, you can use just cardstock if you've got any or I'll be using some chipboards so that is pretty much it it's quite a 
basic material build this. I mean, you can obviously use more bits and pieces to add detail, like I will be doing with the doors. I'll be using plastic rods and ringlets and things. But for now, you can get away with just making it with these ingredients. So let's open this and have a look. So what we're going to be doing is cutting up some paper into strips. Now, if you're not worried about making them an inch and a quarter, you just make them an inch. I would probably recommend going the inch and a quarter method. But on that, it's not actually going to be an inch and a quarter because it's 12 inches. Um, you sort of have to work out how many squares you can get out of this. Obviously, if you're doing an inch, you're going to get 12, but then you're going to lose space by putting if they're an inch you to put walls on so you have to do 12 by divided by 9 will get you 1.3 recurring so that's how much the square is going to be so i'm going to mark these out on this paper and once i've done that i'll come back before we cut them out what we want to do is add some detail in see so it's going to come in with a sculpting tool just to add some cracks in not a lot just in random you probably can't even see this but once it's painted you will notice it so just it doesn't have to be all over sometimes less is more doesn't matter where you put them really either because once we cut them out we could be putting them in random places but it'll just be easier to do it now rather than later on but if you do need to add them just let me know one not a problem and now for cutting it out don't use a ruler for this because you've got the grid try and do it freehand it'll give them a more natural rock stone flag look because let's face it you don't want it to be perfect so deliberately add extra bits in and take nooks out and cut corners so it's so, 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 like this you know so we're just gonna have weird and wonderful shapes when they go together you're not going to get such a uniform look get some corners maybe a little nick out of the side here but yes yeah, so what we're going to be doing is stuff so if you want to add a bit more texture get a bag a uh, box of stones Get your tiles so if you want to add a uh, bit more texture to them get yourself a tin of rocks I um, used this recently for foam bricks but concepts the same and now you've got all these done we're just going to glue them onto the uh, metal sheet in uh, rows and columns of nine. So just for this, just PVA. Come in, stick it on. The walls are made from XPS foam, six mil thick as mentioned, and it's gonna be cut into strips that are gonna be uh, one and a half inches high. You can make them as high or as low as you want. Go for a total 2.5D effect if you want, and make them just like half inch high. But I kind of want to get a bit of height into my dungeons. 2.5D is okay, but kind of loses a bit of realism. So this is like a nice halfway point. So it's not as high, perhaps as commercial walls, but not as small as 0.5. So it really does sort of show walls. Next up come in with the uh, texture roller and add some texture to uh, the walls but there we go then cut that into uh, six and a half inch strips we need to just texture in here and there Like 
so. so we have two the same height and on our grid this, this should equal uh, yeah five squares so already we've got half of half a room almost done so what we're going to do now is take some of this tape measure at six and a half inches And we're just going to cut it using scissors, hopefully. And then try and cut it straight down the middle here, like so. So basically, this three meters will actually give you six meters worth of foam. And then we're just going to stick that here. But we're not going to stick it there yet. That is going to be the plan. What I want to do is just prep all the bits, get them all cut. I need to trim this. Because I want to paint this first. But the general concept is that will be glued on, magnetized in, as you can see. And then won't fall off. You'll be able to have vertical walls. Make sure you've got us all the metal covered in black because you don't want it shining through. Uh, like here, although that is not metal, that's just reflection off, off the camera, but you'll get bits like that. Don't worry, that isn't. Uh, but next we've got to paint it, but the difficult thing is, because we, this is card, there's no real texture on it, it's a dry brush and it's not going to work. So we're going to use the sponge technique, which is where we're going to get a sponge, uh, dab off all the excess, and just randomly put colours everywhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use all different colors including browns browns grays beiges all these different colors i'm just going to go quite random with them allowing sometimes allowing it to dry other times not allowing it to dry etc so i'm just going to get a sponge load brush up then you want to get as much excess as possible floor as well. I'm just gonna come in and do random spots in different colours. Don't push too heavy because you don't want it's gonna build up colors like this so what I'm going to do carry on once I get to the world the next color I'll start recording again And there we go. So, whilst there's no real texture on the cards, doing the dabbing technique gives it a nice textured look. I'm only going to be using one grey for this, which is going to be the first colour we use, which is going to be sort of a, a mid grey. This is actually uh, just this natural grey. And after that, we're going to go into sort of tans. I'm using sort of dark tan here and then a light tan for a final uh, highlight and all I'm going to be doing with this is uh, dry brushing them on all the different colors on the first coat will be quite heavy almost more over brushy rather than dry brushing on a good great baseline and what I'm gonna do as well is you probably won't have to do this and worry about this as much but you probably can't see this on this camera angle but some of my cuts are a bit wonky so that one's a bit angled that's flat so i'm going to make the angle 
version be at the top, the angle cut be at the top, and the flat obviously use at the bottom. So I'm just gonna to help me out later on. I'm just gonna paint the top grey to let me know that's the top. You probably won't have to do this because your cuts are gonna be way better than mine. And while I'm here, might as well get the uh, edges a little grey touch up and do this side as well. Once that is done, come in and dry brush some uh, dark tan onto it. This will be quite a heavy dry brush. Let's see here. And a final height, um, dry brush of the lighter tan, just really just going over the uh, full raised uh, parts. Um, what you're going to want to do is attach it to the bottom here. Um, it does come with double sided tape but why risk that keep coming off. Get some PVA. Whilst it's drying, it might want to peel off like that. So what you're going to have to do is use the glue bowl itself. Just put stuff to hold it in place Wait, while, while, whilst it's drying. And just leave that to dry. You might need some weight, just hold it in place. But leave them to dry. But you can do these in batches. So Now we're on to the doors. Uh, for this, you're going to need a bit that is uh, one and three quarters high and an inch wide. Um, mark down a quarter of an inch from the top and then just draw a semicircle kind of shape top of the door. Come in with some sort of engraving sculpting tool and put some planks in. You're going to need to do this on both sides and then texture it up. and then just cut the uh, top of the door out. Next up, 10 mil thick foam uh, that's two inches high and an inch and a quarter wide. Uh, put your door on and draw around it. Next, ruler, apply a texture front, back and the side, just to, you're not really going to see these but the bits you do see, just add a bit of detail and then knife, cut this out, it's going to take a bit of a steady hand, multiple passes. And then pop it out. Uh, you may need to remove any bits and pieces and bobs in here. Uh, then just come in and just sort of curve the top of the door slightly. You don't have to do this. I just think it makes it look better. Right, next we're going to glue this into here. That's going to be glued into the middle. Later. A bit. PVA. Down the edge of the door frame, uh, the door. And glue it in. Put 
put that to one side to dry. And what you can do when it's dry is add a uh, jewelry ring on, um, add some hinges, add some studs on. I'm not going to show you this here because I've got a whole video about making doors. So just go and watch that and use the techniques applied there to your door. So here I've just got a simple handle just to get it going. Now door frames uh, for when the doors are empty, just going to be quite simple. Just going to make same principle, just frame. Here's, I need to tidy this up, that cut here, but just going to make a frame. So this bottom bit will be magnetized. When you want to open the door, just come in, swap it out with an open one. You're probably going to want more open ones than closed ones, because hopefully your players are going to be exploring the dungeon and opening doors. So if you had to reuse this as a closed door next time I get one, leave this here as an open door. When it comes to in a door, when you're doing this final uh, light tan highlight, paint the door brown, let that dry, and then just paint the tan or dry brush the tan all over. So you're picking out the wood grain texture and sort of giving the door a nice weathered brown look. Remember to do it on both sides. And when that's done, just repaint the uh, metalwork parts, the uh, door furniture black or a dark metallic silver. Why never take your fancy? So once you've got the basic walls made, you can sort of add some various details to them to uh, mix it up a little bit. So here we have two uh, basic uh, four square bits of wall. Um, what we can do is get a bit of a chipboard, one mil chipboard, divide it up into four. This is the same width and height as the wall itself. Uh, probably need two of those, might as well have walls opposite sides kind of thing. And take a little uh, arch template which is slightly less high than the uh, wall bit itself. Use that to uh, trace around. Like so, and do that on all the uh, arches here and on both bits, which I'll do now. And using a pair of scissors, just uh, cut them out. You can use a knife if you want, I just find this generally easier to use a pair of scissors to do it. Finally, just come in with some PVA glue, put it on the back part of it. So, and stick it on into place over one side of the wall. Now you've got something just just adds a bit more interest to it. Paint these up the same way as you have done before. Another thing we can do to add some details, add some columns onto a wall. So again, four square section of wall. And we're gonna cut out four of these bits, which are like three centimeters by two, and then four of these, which are three centimeters by one. And we're just gonna sort of glue them into place. Here, like so, so you're going to have a column like that, column like that, and when they dry, paint them up in the same way. And this is what they're going to look like when they're complete. Just add the magnets onto the bottom, and you've got some varied, interesting walls. You can come up with all other designs that you'd like or you can think of, and I dare say in future videos uh, we will. But let's have a quick look at how quickly now we can utilize this in our games. Okay, so let's see how quickly we can set up a room. So our players are coming in through here. They've just walked on this passage and opened this door. So now we need to set up a room here. I'm going to set up a 5x5 five five room. So with tiles, you're going to be slotting them together, especially got the locking mechanism going to slow you down. Whereas this, you're literally going to slam these in like so. Boom, you've got a new room. You know, I've done it a bit too quick here, but you've got a new room. Boom, there it is all set up. You can then, they open the door. Oh, whack that in. You've got a, you've got your door open. You're not having to worry too much. You can then expand off the corridor like so. 
and it's not going to get knocked. You can do it. So that's it for the basic tile set. What I'm going to be doing in the future is coming back to this and adding to it, adding some details, maybe some other types of walls, maybe do some cavern walls, do something else. But I'm going to be working with this system from now on, I think, because I really enjoy it. It's quick and easy and it doesn't disrupt the flow of the game. So we'll be doing more in the future. But that's it for this one, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. If you have, leave some comments down below for me to read. And if there's anything you'd like to see done with this, perhaps you think I'm, I want to use this system, but I'm not too sure how I'd go about doing this. Let me know and I can perhaps do a video on it. But that's it for this one. Until the next one, guys, please take care.